Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. And this is our Tube Talk segment, where we are going to talk about some of the latest going on in, in TV, and uh, some new episodes, some old episodes, some other episodes. <laughs> and uh, I like I, the way you said that this time. Right, and with tube me, talk. I have Joel Cunningham. How are you today? I'm wonderful. How are you doing today? Awesome. I am doing well also, sir. Oh, it's nice. It's a really good weather we're having some here. To yeah. Get straight to the very generic talk. <laughs> How's the weather? <laughs> yeah, how's the weather? Well, I'm just saying because here in Arizona, we kind of have two weather temperatures. It's either hot or not hot. Yeah. And we're kind of in that beautiful mode between the hot and not hot. Right. Where it's kind of just beautiful outside. It's true. And that happens yeah. like uh, at least one month out of the year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you add all the days it happens, I think yes. Yes, that right. One month total. <laughs> exactly. One month total. would be total. about what it equals. Yeah. So <laughs> next, next podcast, it'll just be boiling lava hot. Yes. Yes. And and we're going to have a uh, a weather special podcast <laughs> on our, our next yeah. episode. We'll talk about all the films about weather films. No, no. Yeah. Just not films. Just talking about weather in we're general. Talking about weather? I yeah. like that. I don't and, know and, anything about it. Okay, fine. Then we can talk about Geostorm coming yeah, up. Yeah, Geostorm. Okay. And you got all these other films that came out in the past. Also. Right. Yeah. So uh, definitely not going to have a weather episode. <laughs> but uh, today's uh, Tube Talk, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Um, just to kind of kick it off, though, I want to talk about uh, a couple of ways you can get connected with us. You can find that's us on idea. our Facebook, mm-hmm. Instagram, Twitter, at Real Review Media, and that's R E E L like a movie reel yeah. and uh tell us how the weather is yeah exactly find us there find <laughs> our find our website we're at real review real review media dot com and then email us at real review media at gmail.com yes and find out all the um awesomeness that is going on in uh the movie and tv world mm-hmm. that we post about so um yeah let's let's dive right into this today so let's talk about this because we're getting into that time of the year where a lot of the TV shows, yeah. the seasonal ones, are wrapping up. Right. Right? So we don't have any more Legion. We don't nope. have any more Walking Dead to talk about. Nope. Um, and Flash and Arrow are on a, like a three-week hiatus for some yeah. reason. So we don't have any new episodes to talk about there. Um, but yeah. in the meantime, there are some other ones starting up, some uh, kind of wrapping up as well, and some, new, um, some old ones that maybe we'll get a chance to revisit. Yeah, I think we'll use this time to really... I mean, in my opinion, really explore the space, you know, really yeah. find something. No, I mean, kind of catch up on a lot of shows that we've been wanting to watch, right. which is very awesome. There's a couple of shows that I started watching that I didn't get to finish. Right. Um, like the OA is a great example, which I was like, oh, that's great, but I cannot invest the time. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. And, <laughs> and a bunch of other shows. I mean, I'd love to talk about some of the ones we haven't even talked about in the past that we've already been through. Yeah. So, yeah. So today we got a kind of a, a couple of old ones and uh, kind of a one newer one. Um, yeah. But uh, let's start off. I want to start off with um, Prison Break. Okay. They brought it back for fifth season. Right. Um, and you were a fan of the original. I was. Well, I was a fan series. of the original first two seasons. Right. I would say maybe first season and half of the second season. Right. But um, and I made the joke Prison Broke because yeah. <laughs> they eventually do get out. Right. Right. But, they do yeah. get out. Right. Um, but. They they brought it back and this this kind of falls in the same category as when they brought twenty four back. Okay. Which I'm still caught up by the way. And nice. let me just say about twenty four and I mentioned this when I reviewed the second or third episode. That I'm, I said I'm going to stop watching it or stop reviewing it <laughs> and give you, it. Though. I'm going to give it the whole season, which yeah. I found out it's not 24 episodes. It's only 12. What? Yeah, so it's are almost gonna, done. What? Yeah. How are they, are they, wait, are they going to do the next 12 hours the next season or what? I don't, I don't know. I just know that they're planning on doing each successive season 12 hours Has at a time. Has the clock been continual with every episode? Yeah. And so they're keeping with that. So I would imagine that they would have to they do- They should just call it 12. <laughs> yeah. 24 divided by two is what they right. should call so it. So this like is like- 24 name in there. And okay. Kind of because as a segue, Prison Break kind of falls in the same category. Shows that were, were really great at one point in time. Yeah. And then- and They tried it with the, Heroes. And then they got can- And then yeah. they got canceled and then brought back. We live yeah. in a world which is kind of cool in which if- if uh, a network, whether it be Fox, mm-hmm. ABC, uh, CBS, whoever it is, yeah. if they cancel something, that it's likely that they a show could live elsewhere. You know? Yeah, well, I think that's what we're seeing. You've seen a lot of like of the streaming type stuff with Netflix. You've seen a lot of shows. I mean, Full House came back. Right. And I mean, you've seen a lot of shows that stopped. I think Gilmore Girls, just a couple examples, um, they will get restarted. But they're thriving. They're doing well right. on these but platforms, Right, but the thing too. that they're doing well with these shows is that they're not 
just trying to restart in like redo the same thing they're really going like they're taking the shows either where they were at and going from there yeah or they're doing something new something different with it although i hated the last season of arrested development right. i would totally give them credit for like <laughs> hey we're not just going to try and like redo the first season of right, arrested development right. we're going to like try and go in a different direction and do what we can with it yeah whereas it feels like with these other shows like 24 and you know even maybe prison break um and heroes and stuff they fell victim to like a lot of the same issues that they had had in their first iteration that probably right. ended up getting getting canceled in the long run anyway right you know so um and let me just wrap up i got two episodes left uh we got, well, we got two weeks left until um 24 is done officially actually yeah. one week now gotcha um and i'll, I'll maybe i'll give an overall view but it hasn't changed it's just so it's it's so everything's so cliche. There's things that happen that don't make sense, yeah. and ev- nothing's new. Yeah, everything's a retread. I'm really disappointed. <laughs> you can bring by back. It. You can bring back a show, but it's got to be good. <laughs> I, it, it's uh, the worst season of 24 with Kiefer Sutherland um, is a lot better than this newest season. Yeah, like it, it's just it's just not that good. I've been disappointed. Prison Break, however, while it does have a lot of the same. Uh, so a lot of the same elements of yeah. the of the first iteration. I do I do I think it's off to a better start. Okay. Which it's only a I think it's a nine or ten episode run. Okay, so it's shortened. It's like a, it's like a event series. A limited series. So run, yeah. um they uh I imagine they might make more if it does well. But right. I, I think it's off to a more promising start. All the characters are they seem like they, their characterizations, the way that they interact, the way that they talk, all of that stuff is the same mm-hmm. that it was from uh, 10 years ago however it was when they left it off right and um so is it like a complete restart in the sense that they're just like literally picking up from the last episode or are they no, giving it, it time they gave it like the exact amount of years that okay. since it last aired so okay. that helps um the acting's good overall i uh <laughs> there's a lot of mystery in involved because basically what you find out and this is in all the trailers and promotional materials michael yeah. schofield is alive in which if you've watched the series uh it he was dead previously mm-hmm. at the end of the last one so dun, dun, dun. um he <laughs> he's alive yeah and they find him and then basically and if you if we spoil things on t- on, on tube talk here so yeah so you find out at the end you're like he's alive and his brother finds him and he's talking mm-hmm. to him he's like where have you been he's like i'm not michael <laughs> and then he walks away. It's it's I'm his less twin evil brother. It's less dun, cheesy dun, than dun. that. Okay. You, you could tell the way that they filmed it. They did that on purpose because yeah. he walks away like you can see he's devastated that he couldn't tell his brother that it was actually him. He's trying to be someone else. Oh. So there's this twist to it and a lot of mystery surrounding it. So they got a lot to to gotcha. to work off here. A these classic next... case of somebody pretending to be somebody when they're actually not that somebody. Right, yeah. but <laughs> it's, it's different. He's got some new tattoos now, um, which is interesting. But I, I like the way this one starts than the other ones. I will say some negatives, and you'll totally hate this too if you ever watched it, is yeah. um, Michael had a, a, a son. Mm-hmm. Before he died, actually, it was done. He was born after he died, and um, I think I got to revisit that anyway. <laughs> um, and the son has very unrealistic seven-year-old dialogue. Oh, like, yeah, like it's terrible. You could tell that some old, you know, person, whoever wrote the script, yeah, does not know how children talk because this children was saying things and like. Kids don't talk like this. I have three <laughs> yeah, kids. None of them know. talk like yeah, this. Yeah, <laughs> you get it. I, I, sometimes I can kind of deal with it better than others. It just depends on the, the circumstance. It's limited though. So okay. that's the benefit. I yeah. mean, there's maybe two scenes where like this kid's, this is not real. You're yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't, I probably would have he's a hard talking time with that. to. He's talking to his uncle, Lincoln, and he, and he's like, she's, he's like, how you doing kid? And she, and um, uh, Michael's son, they named him Mike after his dad, but he's, he's like, he's like, does this have to do with my dad? And then he goes, maybe. And then the kid goes, <laughs> the kid goes, I can see it in my mom's face. She looked oh, like, it, and then he says some other things like, I was like, like okay, yeah. yeah, that's not, the kids don't She talk only like that. shows that face when she's in deep sadness. Yeah, when she's thinking, thinking about, about dad, yeah. <laughs> my papa. It's like, I know. On. Other yeah. than that, there was some unrealistic stuff with some of the action. There was a fight scene that happened in Yemen that was, yeah. I'm pretty sure, it was very, very close to that to that famous Luke Skywalker kick in Return of the Jedi where he does a kick <laughs> yeah. and the guy falls off, but you can clearly see the kick doesn't actually meet with yeah. the guy. <laughs> yeah. There's still the sound effect. Right, right. It's you a, know, connecting. And yeah. then- um, Did they so, do the Wilhelm scream? No, they don't do yeah. that. But like this guy, he uh, 
headbutt somebody, but I'm 100% positive that headbutt did not touch anything. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Right. So I was like, that is weird. I got to go back and watch it, but I thought yeah. that was weird. Um, there's an antagonist, kind of a mystery antagonist in this mm. that like I, they're trying to kill Michael's brother, but they like go after um, Michael's wife, Sarah, and like, you know, what do bad guys do? They just kill people, you know? The, mm-hmm. and so they go after and the husband gets in the way, the new husband gets in the way. They like shoot him in the leg and then just like leave him there. Okay. Alive after, the, like they weren't wearing, wearing masks or anything. Yeah. I don't know. It was just, that was kind of weird. It didn't, me. it wasn't fully, con- like the concept of it wasn't fully fleshed out. They yeah. just kind of needed something to happen there. Uh, so unless they, they like, like later on we'll find out that they're not really like hitmen. They're like yeah. there to kind of enforce and not really kill. Like if we find yeah. that out later, I'd be okay with it. But right. if they're supposed to be the antagonist and like right. the baddies, then, then that I, needs yeah. to be there. <laughs> I get that. I mean, you expect that with certain shows like the flash, you expect there's going to be like, instead of the bad guy, just killing somebody, they're going to have this long, like, yeah. I'm going to tell you about why I'm doing this evil thing. And then eventually that's going to allow the hero to like do something about it. Or right. you kind of expect that with certain types of shows, but this show, it, feels like i haven't really watched obviously but it feels like they're trying to go for a little bit more realism and so it would it would probably take me away from the whole connection right. to the characters and the plot of the story yeah the plot and story yeah so i mean i like it a little better than uh because I, I i for what it was i enjoyed the first episode of 24 legacy but i like it a little better than that yeah. Yeah. um i would i would give it a 7.5 so okay. 7.5 um but yeah, so we'll see what happens. It's a limited run, nine, yeah. ten episodes, so it shouldn't be too hard to get through. I'm looking at maybe trying to check out the first episode or something at some point to see if I even have any kind of interest. Watch the first season. Okay. It's good. The first season of Prison Break is really good. That's the problem is there's a lot of shows out there where it's like the first season is good and then it kind of goes down after that. And then there's a lot of shows out there where the first season is bad and it kind of goes like up from there. But yeah. I mean- it's rare when you can find a show that's like, the first season is great, second season is even better, yeah. it gets better, better, better. Suits yeah. is a great example of a show being really awesome its first season, and then yeah. it kind of progressively went downhill from there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that's it for uh, Prison Break. Uh, this next show that mm-hmm. we're going to talk about, I I actually haven't seen, but you have been watching, right? Yeah, so this is one of the shows that, I mean, it's still ongoing. Okay. And it's one of those shows we're going to talk about that kind of like one that we never really got to because we had so many other shows and content that we wanted to talk about during this uh, segment. And the show we're talking about is a show called Archer, and it's a comedy show. It's on FX. It's actually moving, I believe, from FX to the, sh- the channel FXX. So it's their kind of proprietary, like right. subsidiary. I, I'm not sure. I don't have like cable cable right now. You know, I do mostly yeah. online streaming and yeah. Amazon and Netflix and things. And so I watch most of my shows kind of after they've already aired um, and other, you know, other. So I don't really know how that whole breakdown works. FX, yeah, yeah, yeah. FX, FX. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, I don't know. Eventually they're going to have like FXXX. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, the show is about a covert black ops and espionage group that takes a back seat. This is the IMDb description. Okay. Takes a back seat to zany personalities and relationships between secret agents and drones. And it's got it's it's an animated show. It's got the voice acting of um, H. John Benjamin, who's the primary voice actor that's Archer. Okay. And then you have his mom, who's played by Jessica Walter, who she's hilarious. She's the lady from Arrested Development. We talk about the mom from Arrested Development. You've got yep. Judy Greer, who is also from Arrested Development. Um, plays the secretary. Uh, you have Amber Nash, who plays a character named Pam. I'm sorry, Judy Greer plays a character named Cheryl. Jessica Walter plays Mallory Archer, who's okay. Archer's mom. And then you have Chris Parnell, who plays Cyril Figgis, who's kind of this really nerdy, like, um, codependent, sad, mopey, kind of nervous man who sort of is like the brains, if you will. Okay. Of the, <laughs> um, he's very smart, but he's also very geeky and stupid at times. And then you have Aisha Tyler, who's Lana Kane, who plays the sort of on again, off again, ongoing love interest for Archer. Okay. But they have a very messed up relationship. Okay. Um, it's not, so I'll say this very much in the get-go. This show is not one that's for everybody. It is a very kind of specific humor style okay it is a combination of lowbrow like toilet humor okay at times mostly with dialogue with sometimes like visually um mixed with very ridiculous crazy over the top scenarios and situations that these characters kind of find themselves in okay. the hijinks that they get themselves in so another character that i should i should mention there's a guy named um uh lucky 
he's the the voice actor is Lucky Yates, crazy name, but he plays a guy named Dr. Krieger. And Krieger is like this inventor guy that works for this espionage agency. So a good example of their weird, quirky humor is the espionage agency is named ISIS. Okay. <laughs> you know? And um, the show kind of tracks their misadventures, if you oh will, as they go through these, these different scenarios of espionage. And it's kind of the relationships of the characters and the hijinks. And if you think of a espionage, darker version of Arrested Development, kind of. Okay. That's kind of like this style of show. It's very... Okay. The the thing that I like about it is it's every episode is a bit self-contained, okay. but they do tell an overarching story, and the story eventually grows, and it gets bigger, and they add funny characters and quirky things, and the main... The reason I say it's very similar to Arrested Development is because the cast in Arrested Development are kind of like these zany, ridiculous people they're not real people right they're not real people that exist within like our normal world right and because of their zaniness and their craziness they have these weird relationships with each other and the outside environment but outside of the other world's pretty normal yeah and that's kind of how this show is the characters themselves are zany they've got issues they've got their own set of problems and they've all got a little bit of some sort of um personality disorder and they're different though and the whole world outside of them is normal. And so when they interact with people on the outside, it often results in really morbid, but sometimes hilarious and crazy situations uh, with the people that are involved. And there's, there's a lot of really cool and kind of touching moments that the show can actually be a bit uh, like, touching really? Time. Yeah, a little okay. bit. Um, and I, I would also say to a lot of people, I'm trying to not give away specific elements of the different show and I'm going to get to kind of where things are at right now, but the show is, it's an adult show. Okay. And it's got a lot of adult humor. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's on FX. It's yeah. on FXX now. So yeah. it's definitely for a more of a mature audience. A lot of the humor goes that way. The first season is also pretty hard to get through. Um, okay. It can, Are they long seasons? Um, no. I mean, they're 30 minute, 30 minute episodes with, I believe, seasons go 12 episodes. I'm oh, okay. pretty sure. So it's not that bad. Yeah. So it it's pretty standard, you know, format for as far as the shows. And I know that the most recent. Uh, season was renewed for I think they're up they've been renewed up to 10 seasons okay but I think this most recent episode this most recent season only has eight episodes I think they're shrinking them yeah I think a lot of for that night I'm going to get into the content of the show in in a second here a little bit more but um, the first season again is hard to get through not necessarily because of the the humor style or anything but just because you're getting know the characters they're kind of getting a you know running kind of style of how they're going to interact with each other the jokes they're going to say but then everything gets really funny and really fresh and they start telling these jokes that you're not expecting and all these just scenarios and there's like and I'll I'll spoil one episode because it. it's just I I want to explain how some of the humor is there's <laughs> there's one episode where Archer kind of fakes the idea that somebody in the cast has cancer Okay. It has breast cancer yeah. <laughs> specifically. And it's such a horrible, it's a mean, awful thing. And if you, you understand the character, you understand why he does it. And I'm not making light of that fact at all, but um, it's a joke, you know? So, so he does that the whole episode and he's making this really horrible scenario for somebody. And then at the end, he, he basically lets go the fact that he's been making a joke over the entire thing. But it turns out at the very end of the episode, somebody actually does have breast cancer and it's Archer. Oh my <laughs> so, gosh. So the whole episode is kind of like leading up to right. this punchline in a way that like it was, he's doing this horrible thing, this horrible thing. And then the payback, there's a lot of karmic yeah, justice, you know, in the episodes. <laughs> People will set up bad scenarios. Archer more likely than not is the one that's going to do it. And the really funny thing though, is that, you know, it's an espionage type, show he's actually a really good agent he's actually a really awesome really yeah and so like the episode after that with like the breast cancer is like the whole episode of him going through recovery and remission and trying to you know do all the treatments and everything like that and he's going on these rampages where he's got like his iv bag and he's like rampage you know (laughs) and just like really crazy stuff um so what i would say is the show's kind of it arced you know it kind of reached this peak of good quality stuff where i would say happened around season five or so and that was kind of like the highlight of it for me. And we're up to we're up to about season seven right now is where we're currently standing at. And I'd say the show has kind of hit a bit of a lull. It's kind of hit a little a little okay. bit. Of, I'm sorry, we're up to season eight. Okay. Not season seven. Um, I just finished watching season. I did a mass recovery and tried to cover all the episodes <laughs> real quick. So we're up to season eight. And it, it feels like they're running out a bit of a steam, running out a bit of creative ideas. And it's very apparent in the fact that like this most recent season, they're doing this thing where it's kind of, it's all taking place in somebody's brain. It's all taking place in somebody's mind. And that's, to me, that's a sign of just like the lacking kind of where to take things. Cause you're really connected to the main story, not in this like dream, like scenario that yeah. this person is going through. So I would say it's, I'm hoping it gets better. 
I think up till about the season five and a half or five or so. Okay. Really funny show. Really good quality show. Adult humor, but mm-hmm. if you are comfortable with that, then super funny. And I would definitely, definitely give it a watch. And the the main voice actor that you have for show, H. John Benjamin, um, you might also recognize him from Bob's Burger. Where he plays Bob. Okay. Yeah, and he does a great show. He does a great voice acting job on both shows. Oh, cool. So yeah. yeah. So there you go. That's awesome. No, oh, so talk about eight seasons. Yeah, eight seasons. I, like <laughs> if I had to give it a, uh, if I had to give it an overall measurement up okay. until like the last season, I would say it was kind of like going down. I would give it like a like a A minus, kind of B plus A minus. Oh range. wow. Okay. So like eighty nine, so ninety one. But it's kind of like as the seasons are going. Like if I just had to rank it on this last season and this current season so far. I'd put it closer to like a C plus, almost B minus range. Uh, so it's okay. really starting to kind of get gotcha. Like the jokes aren't landing; they're not quite as funny anymore. They're very predictable. Yeah, the characters. That's the other thing is the characters aren't really arcing. They're going. They're like things are happening and they're changing. Their life is changing, but they're not really adjusting. And they've gotten a lot farther away from the whole ISIS espionage type elements, and they've gotten much more into this, like just their people interacting right. with each other because they just have to. And okay. so it's it's making it less funny. Gotcha. So, yeah, there you well, go. There you have it on Archer, guys. Um, the uh, and I want to take a second too here on this to talk about this next show. Yeah, because I'm actually you know I was doing a little research on this. I I started watching Preacher. Okay. okay. Which I've heard good things about. I want to start watching myself. I did too. I had no idea what it's about. Mm-hmm. I found out recently after I started watching it. I mind you, <laughs> I am halfway through the first season. Yeah. So I just finished episode five. Yeah. And uh, the second season premieres in June, so I'll, I'll I'll definitely be done with this, and by next week I should be able to do a recap. Right. So my familiarity with the two things, I want to hear what you're saying. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I was at Comic Con, and I saw I started seeing posters and stuff for it everywhere. Yeah. And I had no idea, and I was like, yeah, it looks all right. My sister though said, you should watch it. It's super violent, but it's really it's really <laughs> cool. It's really awesome. Okay. Yeah. So I said. found out. Yeah. Um, first of all, I started watching it without knowing anything about it. I just yeah. started watching it. Um, I have my 30-day trial pass to Hulu. <laughs> and I was like, let's watch this thing. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm surprised because I thought this was like more like based in like reality when it, I found Christian out. faith and <laughs> it's not, no, not really. <laughs> That's not what I had in mind, but because I, I, knew, I knew it was like yeah. – violent and that sort of thing but um i quickly found out it's got this like sci-fi supernatural element to it yeah and i was like what and then i'm finding out oh this is based off of a dc comic property right yeah and i was like i had no idea (laughs) and all these things are happening i'm like what is going on here um just kind of to give you (laughs) <laughs> the synopsis on it. And I didn't read this until just now. And I kind of f- find it funny that I didn't know this going into this. After a supernatural <laughs> event at his church, a preacher enlists the help of a vampire to find God. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, what she, and that's what she talked about. She talked about it being pretty funny, the back and forth between him and the vampire. The vampire, uh, as rough as he is, he's probably my favorite character. His yeah. name's Cassidy. Okay. Um, and he he's a vampire, but he's he's funny. He has a lot of little things that he does and quirks and, and things that he says that are kind of funny. Yeah. Um, but the there's a lot more to it than that. The main guy, his name is Jesse Custer. His dad used to have this church in a small town. He's since grown up, become kind of a, a bad guy of sorts, but he... he kind of came back and says, you know, I made a promise to my dad. I was going to be a good guy. So he's coming back. He's going to continue the church. The church is struggling. Um, and then, but the way that the show starts out, it, it puts you in this like mindset. This is not going to be a normal show because the opening scene is like space. And yeah. then there's loud text across the front that says outer space. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, and you see the scene coming from outer space. Like this okay. is the opening thing and it's just coming right. And within the first two minutes, this thing like from outer space, comes and like inhabits the body of this like preacher of this one uh, this one like guy in Africa who's preaching <laughs> and then he like falls back and everybody's like he's a chosen one or whatever he's a prophet yeah. and then all of a sudden like he just explodes and like there's oh. blood stuff just sh- everywhere and everybody's Super like violent. oh my gosh yeah it's really violent <laughs> that's what my sister said there you go. that was the one thing that like kind of hooked me because I was like okay this is really weird and then but, <laughs> you realize you're saying exploding pastors are what hooked you well that's the yeah. shock and awe I think gotcha. I think is, is what hooked me and it's not all like that and I think yeah. If it was all like that, it'd be a little bit much, but I'm, I'm putting together pieces here because I'm only halfway through the first season. Mm-hmm. There's only 10 episodes, but um, what you find is that this thing that goes into the person and it explodes and it goes to other preachers of a... different faiths and religions oh. and um, and 
I, I was know. thinking I was going in a different direction. I was like, is this guy meet Spider Man eventually? No, and so because <laughs> what I'm thinking is is that this thing is like looking for a host in yeah. a body, and I don't know the answers because I'm not done yet. But it's looking for a host that's like either worthy of carrying this thing that's right. that it is. We don't know what it is yet, and um, if it doesn't work, if the like the body is like incompatible, it just explodes. So it goes to any any pastor of any religion right. any priest right so here's a wow. funny thing and you see this on a news article in like the <laughs> second or third episode I'm just laughing at this start of it so yeah. you see like it goes to a, a, a someone in Russia that's like speaking to a congregation of some religion I don't know <laughs> oh, no. and and that you don't see it but they're talking about it. like he he exploded, he exploded right yeah. and then later you see that uh, it went to visit Tom Cruise as he was speaking to a Scientology <laughs> <laughs> he was speaking to his uh, Scientology people yeah. and <laughs> he exploded if they could have actually gotten Tom Cruise and then to later take that role and then like three episodes later they're funny. like holding a memorial for like <laughs> like Cruise. everybody's yeah, wearing shades and everybody's white t-shirts really and, like yeah. distraught about Tom Cruise oh, being dead <laughs> I was like wow they went there it was yeah. kind of crazy anyway it's kind yeah, of funny that's pretty funny there is some humor like that um when they try and do humor it does it does work but they don't always try and go for humor right but all the Which humor I'm, that they that's do good it is good yeah the humor that they do interject is good a lot does come from cassidy okay um but uh the preacher at this point he he the thing is in him now okay he, he's compatible because he didn't explode but now he has this <laughs> ability of like um uh, what's the thing that vampires have where they, it's like the power of suggestion. Oh, like and, and you can mind controls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Like a Jedi. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, and Cassidy says as much at, at some point in it, yeah. but, um, he like tells somebody to do something and they do it. And if he's not careful, oh. like, like he's very little, like they can take it very literally, like gotcha. in a bad way. Yeah. Um, like if he says get out of here, they could go jump off a cliff or something. Because I think that means yeah, like, like that's an extreme yeah. example. I don't want to ruin one thing because it's kind of a plot point for something else. But I got you. Um, it, yeah, it's it's really fascinating to me. It's kind of going. It, I've hit like this kind of slump in the middle a little bit. I think the last episode and a half. Okay. Where it's I'm like I want more. And I think it's a it's, mid-season lull. That makes right. Sense. It's kind of veered away from Jesse and his story a little bit. Jesse from Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Custer, the main. I'm dude. sorry. I'm trying to draw these parallels. <laughs> so um, he's uh, he's it's veered away from him, and I think that's kind of lagging a little bit. And I don't like where it's going. But he's like this. He's really awesome at fighting. But he only did like one fight scene in the first episode, and it was amazing it was yeah. this amazing fight scene that puts all of the fight scenes in iron fist to shame well they would yeah right <laughs> and <laughs> not, i was like wow not a high bar i know but that was incredible and it's yeah. very all the all the action is very visceral and very like believable and it's really well done it sounds cool so yeah i'm excited to finish it i think they're going to tie some stuff up and and if i heard it's good overall it should end pretty good but i'm pretty excited about it i think initially i, I give it like an 8.5 very cool. That's what I was going to ask. So yeah. you would suggest people watch it. Is there a specific audience that you feel like this would appeal to? You've explained it a lot, but right. for listeners out there that might be going, well, I still don't eh. know if it's for me. Yeah, no, if you're... If, like no, if you're a Legion fan, would you if, probably like Preacher? There are elements to it that remind me of Legion, especially okay. like the like mental two like personalities in one body kind of thing a little bit. Well, yeah. Um, it's very violent. Uh, so Walking Dead fans. Adult themes. Yeah. Walking Dead fans. Probably yeah. it's an AMC show. Gotcha. Kids, um, elementary school, children. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Small animals, puppies, no, 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 hamsters. No. So yeah. if you're sensitive to anything like that, violence or, or um, uh, minor adult content gotcha. and things like that. So I think, you're saying the show should be on FXXXX. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, but it's good. It's really well done. And you know, it's, it's developed by um, Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Really interesting to me. I would listen to a podcast with Seth Rogen on actually. He's an interesting guy. He's got he talked about how they have this development process for a lot of their projects yeah. and he's like, We'll have ideas that we'll want to have done and they won't happen for like ten years. Yeah. So I mean that guy's probably got shows that are gonna be coming up. He's working on another show. Yeah. Um I don't remember what it's called. He's working on oh no, it might be a movie actually. Yeah. Um it's based off another like comic property or something like that. He seems like the kind of guy that would make like a comic book styled property. I I know? like that he's in charge of it and it's not all just his kind of humor cuz I I, yeah. I have a hard time connecting with him actually as a as his humor <laughs> is concerned. Yeah, it's a bit one it's it's one note. Right. But it's funny if yeah. if in the right role like Pineapple Express is pretty so, funny, but yeah. Anyways, um yeah, pre, uh, I'll probably finish it before this next week and we can recap it then but um yeah, cool. other than that that's that's really it for today's show Sweet. Uh, anything else you want to add to that joel 
No, I think I'm good. Cool. Well, check us out in the social medias and uh, find us, email us, uh, check out the site, get sign up for the newsletter, whatever it may be. Uh, thanks for joining in, and it's been real. It's been real.